do think it's not desirable that we have staff uh, at risk as well. And sometimes, um, um, maybe, uh, I, I can only say that um, <coughs> from uh, the perspective of directing our social care, I was very keen to sort of get a detailed review of mental health services before our data to commit to how we make them safe. I was very clear that we, were, that we had a safest target and that there was potential with the mental health services to maintain, but I really need that detail understand where the services have been made. Um, and as I say, I've come to the proposal consultation that we've been made. So there has been a debate, and uh, uh, I can uh, obviously stress really that um, this is a significant service area, it's a very high risk service area, and uh, it would have been appropriate for me to um, offer people voluntary redundancy and leave gaps in the service to the um, operation requirements. I think that pretty much covers uh, the issue. There, there is no drive for me to reduce terms and conditions. It's simply to look at uh, all, all angles and all those angles that have been in there as well. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I so, in essence, the report uh, comes at the back of a review of um, our community mental health services. Um, uh, those are provided uh, in conjunction with uh, Cheshire for a March uh, to provide nation trust. On a day to day basis, staff work alongside the Cheshire Royal Partnership Trust. And, uh, I've met the staff myself uh, over the last year or two. We've had a number of conversations about the way forward. And uh, staff have been very clear that they want to move into the integrated model. Uh, we're very keen on moving forward with the integrated model. And as we consulted on that, The concept of integration is uh, very, very dear to people who work within the service uh, as well as the um, staff. The, the key, though, is to uh, ensure that uh, the review focuses on uh, making sure that we uh, are able to deliver mental health services within the cost improvement program that the uh, Trust has, uh, the Commission Service by the NHS, and our own efficiency. So in many ways, again, for what we have been looking at is our priority and opportunity to make efficiency. Um, what we've set out really is, is that uh, we recognise that um, many aspects of the service do require um, current staff levels uh, and that uh, we're not seeking to uh, reduce staff across the board in any shape or form. But we have looked at the um, interface between uh, what's referred to as Beacon Sphere day service and the uh, how we each day service is defined, what we recognise is that there's some duplication there. So in many ways what we're looking for is the efficiency to be about re repositioning that service and the media duplication will be very strong and focus on supporting people in the local community in the process of their um, We are um, suggesting in terms of recommendations as well as that, that uh, we consult on uh, staff within neighbourhoods, so all, all the people's mental health teams being in place within the community mental health teams that will extend and build resources in uh, specific mental health services. It will also allow us to uh, deliver an old age mental health services rather than the current situation where we've got under 65 and under 65 will allow us to hire a much more cohesive service. And uh, we're asking really to take forward the steps for us, and I think this is a bit that really um, um, links in with uh, the experience that we have uh, representing the trade union. The step process will really uh, enable us to work through this in some, some uh, very uh, comprehensive detail with the team and staff. Uh, building on the current co location um, and then looking towards a secondment agreement. Now, the secondment agreement would facilitate any performance transfer based on what we suggested is that we, are, uh, we need to have an agreement in terms of what we get from council to deliver it as we move towards integration. So we're looking at a stage of secondment followed by a uh, potentially full transfer into that stage. But all of that is subject to full participation. Um, 
Um, okay, thanks very much for that, program. I mean, I'm, I'm reassured um, in the sense that I think you've, you've spelled it out pretty explicitly, but no decisions have been made to change <laughs> terms and conditions. Um, uh, and I think, you know, what you're asking us tonight is to agree to a consultation exercise around a whole range of issues of it outlined in, in item 12, but no decisions have been made yet. So, um, you know, I, I think on that basis, um, and the fact that it's it's spelled out pretty clearly in, in 12.1, that the consultation will absolutely involve staff and the trade union representatives in that consultation, which will run from the 27th of January to the 14th of March, um, which, you know, I'm, I'm comfortable with because um, it is important that trade union colleagues and staff and other key stakeholders have an opportunity to comment on these proposals. So I think on the basis of the fact that you're just asking us for, for authority to go out and do this consultation, I'm re reasonably relaxed about agreeing, asking Cabinet to agree to that, and then presume that at the end of that process you'll bring the burden of all back to Cabinet with some specific recommendations. Yeah. Yeah, just linking back to the consultation, there, there is a time pressure for people. If people, uh, and we're currently working with staff in terms of those that would want to take voluntary movements, and there is a time pressure that those people need to leave on the day of March. So HR advice to have at the moment so that that staff can be able to have the advice. There is a time pressure. Um, so we will have to work first with trade unions and individuals involved and HR to make sure that we follow due process in terms of but also that we seek the opportunity to uh, get the best <coughs> we can for individuals that we can allow to go. And I, and I think, you know, uh, as part of the, the <coughs> um, budget resolution, I think we said where where we can we can jointly agree that it is, you know, in the interests of the, the, the authority to allow people to leave on the, the current um, scheme, we will we will do our best to make that happen. You know, I would repeat that commitment. Okay, so I think on that basis, I, I'd be recommending to Cabinet that we agree those recommendations um, and obviously look forward to, to that further report once the consultation uh, with all those key players is, uh, is taking place uh, and we can move forward on that basis. So is, is that agreed by Cabinet? No, really. Okay, thanks for having Thanks very much. Uh, 
exception of other events, but um, uh, those, those are the rules that we're working under. So I'm, I'm recommending that we agree to that. And then the other element of this report is the capital element, um, where uh, I'm really pleased with the work that David Armstrong and colleagues have done to try and ensure that we maximise our capital receipts. I know, David, you're leaving no stone unturned at the moment to, to, to do that, which is uh, very, very encouraging. Um, and we know that the spend uh, up on date was 16 million. I'm sure it's, it's, it's even more since then. I think the other element to the capital report is um, some uh, not fairly minor reprofiling of various schemes um, into the 2014-15 uh, financial year um, to about 2.9 million, and that they're listed in Table 2 on page 47. So I'm going to suggest to Cabinet that we agree those recommendations. I agree. Agree. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, that then takes us to item four, which is the collection fund for 2013-14. Again, this is uh, the, the standard report that we, we can get. I think um, just to take you directly to the recommendation in item 12, um, that we note the estimated nil balance position of the collection fund uh, for the year uh, ending 31st of March. Uh, but there's 12.2 is to ask cabinet to agree to delegate powers by the leader in conjunction with the director of resources around the non-domestic <coughs> rates um, declaration because I think there's some further guidance expected from government um, pretty soon and we have to submit our return by the end of January. So I think um, with the agreement of cabinet we need to delegate that um, to myself in, in conjunction with the director of resources. To respond to. So I'm, I'm suggesting we agree those two recommendations. So agree. Really? Okay, thank you. Um, and then we go on to item five, which is the debt write offs. Um, I just wanted to just say a few words um, by way of introduction to this. I mean, this is clearly a, uh, a report we have every year because inevitably there, there are a number of debts that we have to write off for. You know some pretty obvious reasons about the the age of the debt and you know the, the inability of us to trace um, members of families etc to, um, to to recover debts. I, I just would say I, I'm, I know that we've done a lot of work, particularly in the in the uh, the light of the Eugene Sullivan report around bad debts, where we've we've really done some excellent work in, in recovering historic debts. Um, the bit I just wanted to pick up on is um, clearly in, in Appendix A, I think um, there are some of these debts, some of which date back a number of years. Um, there was a previous, uh, a different administration where um, there were clearly some very basic errors made by the authority in terms of uh, trying to recover debts. And, I mean, I'm, I'm just going to ask Joe, Joe Block, who's the um, strategic director responsible. I just want to be reassured, Joe, that's part of the work that I know that we're doing um, in, on the back of the Eugene Sullivan review, that those um, there are mechanisms in place to make sure that every possible penny and pound of debt that we can recover, that we do recover, and that you know that we are, we've got we tightened up on our procedures. So, do you want to just say a few words about yeah, it? Yeah, I see. Just to say, we have uh, absolutely uh, around the debate that we've had about this is historic debt that we've been doing. Uh, but more importantly, there are some fundamental issues that we have highlighted in this report that we need to address. Uh, there is ongoing work between um, our director of resources, our business planning, our planning, our planning, our planning, and also the national PCS and the DARS to make sure that any debt that we've put in the emergency room is So, I'm going to recommend um, the, the paragraph 2, two one report be noted and the debt to be written off as detailed in, in this report. Uh, can we agree those recommendations? Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. 
Okay, we now go on to the um, item six, which is the budget council procedure, um, which um, I know, sir, did you consulted with the, the party leaders on. Um, I, I'm certainly happy that um, that, that budget procedure is, is okay. Did you, I don't know if you want to say anything about this. Sir, did you? Okay, can I just simply then um, recommend to cabinet that we agree this uh, procedure for budget council? Thank you. Okay, so that's, um, that's agreed. Thank you for that. Um, we now move on to the central and public support services punch uh, items. Uh, item seven is still the Middle Road Rondra. So, Adrian, would you uh, just speak to this, please? Uh, it's not just to say, yeah, it's very straightforward. This is in fact a foreign post, therefore, it's not in use post in September. And all the residents of Rome, the amount of people, uh, 23 places of adults who do live in difficulties, is out of use. Um, and uh, we don't need any more talk to you. Okay, is that great? And uh, that takes us on to item eight, size of former Lincoln Primary Entrance Building, Town Meadow Lane Water. Thank you. Well, this is not a similar story. Um, in this case, we will be a new site because the building was uh, demolished 12 years ago. And there's no sense whatsoever in hanging on to any sites. We need to uh, sell it as Okay, can we agree that recommendation? Great, okay, so that then takes us then to the highways and transportation item, item nine, which is highway maintenance funding and structural maintenance program 2014 15. Harry, do you want to introduce us, please? Thank you, Bill. I do have a report on the issue for the 30 years of the highway and the base preamble before I attend to the report. I'm going to go to the preamble of all the rants, whichever way you want to go around. The uh, condition of our roads is a very important factor for the residents and businesses of Willow. There's been much debate about the condition of Willow roads and the impact that will be felt due to the scaling cuts by this Conservative Lib Dem government. It's important that we keep them in good condition, in a, a good a condition as possible despite those unjust cuts. I'm very pleased to say that Willow's principal A road remains some of the best in the country. National Indicator 186, which measures the condition of these roads, has improved from 4.1% in 2009 10 to just 1% in 2012 13, which is a testament to the hard work of our staff at this administration's determination to maintain them to as high a standard of, as possible, despite us not being a sort of poor quality and having to suffer scaling cuts that many councils in the north face. Uh, I think we should congratulate the tech services department on their work. It's up to 4.53 this is a new course. But sadly I don't think we can expect this standard to continue if the cuts by central government also continue. I think it's it's a sad it's a sad future that's uh, away. Anyway, so the report. This report sets out the funding available for the <coughs> maintenance of highway assets for 2014-15 from government grants and which totals 2.978 million. The report then sets out the allocation of that funding for the road, lighting and structure infrastructures based on the assessment of priority needs. The structural, structural repairs required for lighting systems and bridges are determined solely by priority need of the maintenance programs for roads and footways. <coughs> the structural maintenance program also takes into account, into account the views of the constituency committees and the locally based highway inspectors regarding the known maintenance concerns. The outcome is a program of all the streets which are to be resurfaced or receive surface treatment as set out in the appendix, the past appendix. Although the extent of that program is greater than the 1.928 million funding proposed to allow for any of the highest priority schemes which have to drop out, such as due to clashes with utility schemes, and these arise every year, or where schemes are completed be below the estimated cost, and that does regularly happen. It is recommended that the following are approved, and this is the recommendation which briefly asks us to agree the allocation of funding, the program of schemes, the arrangement for making changes to the program, 
the specific requirements for additional government financing. Okay, thanks, uh, Harry. Um, I think very obviously it's welcome that we got um, a, a, a I think a quite um, exciting uh, program of improvements, the, the appendices, notwithstanding the um, funding challenges that we've got. Um, and, and again, I, I'd, I'd like my I'd like to add my congratulations as well as Harry's to our the work that our offices have done in um, in improving the condition of our uh, principal A roads as set out in paragraph 2.5.3. I think um, that's a fantastic effort in the, um, in, in, in the context of the uh, funding constraints that we face. So, um, Harry's moved those recommendations. Can, can Cabinet, can we agree those Cabinet? Agree. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Harry. Right, on to um, the adult social care uh, items. Item 10 is uh, extra care housing strategic delivery partners. Chris? Thank you, Claire. Um, this is a fairly new story for us, um, and thanks to the officers who invested in the work. Um, extra care housing is a, a cost effective preventative model to support the independence and better outcomes for people who might otherwise require residential care or care in the community. There are only five extra care housing schemes in the middle, and the demand continues to exceed the supply. And there's no provision in South West Wales Council has a growth group allocating £3 million of capital to improve extra care housing provisions in Middle. The average bill for cost of a typical extra scheme of 30 to 40 units ranges from £8 million to £10 million. Soft market testing established the impact of the £3 million of capital growth allocation could be significantly maximised by well funded percentage contributions of their units to this scheme with strategic housing. A procurement process seeking strategic delivery partners was initiated on the 2nd of October last year, and the outcome of the process will be the provision of 102 new units of extra care housing during the period 2014 to 2017 by a strategic partnership with a provider at a cost of £2,796,000 per council, and this rate contains
honors you for the union gang for the period of 2014 to 16. Um, can I also say these recommendations support the views of the um, schools forum? This is a background chair. All the early years provided nursery schools, nursery colleges, and private voluntary independent are funded through a single funding formula. This is a budget of 13.5 million in the school budget. And um, this funds um, 15 hours free uh, dairy education to all children aged three and four. 15 hours free dairy education to disadvantaged two-year-olds. The statutory entitlement is extended to approximately 20 to 10 two-year-olds. Those who did at school to be entitled to a free school meal. And uh, the government will extend this to 40 to 10 to two-year-olds until September 2014. We are required to keep this funding formula under review, so also for the practice to do that. Uh, Two-year-olds funded at a flat rate of £4.85 an hour, three and four-year-olds funded £3.20 plus a number of supplements. The report is, an, is the outcome of the consultation with the area providers. The proposals themselves were centred around the funding and the treatment came from nursing.